Hey everyone, Cedric from Vertex Marketing Agency, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about is your Facebook tracking set up really bulletproof? Because it's important that you're sending as much data as possible to Facebook, and sometimes you actually have things like ad blockers, or I mean, the list goes on, that could potentially block the requests from being sent to Facebook. In this video, what I actually did is I actually made my own Chrome extension, uh, and then I'm also gonna be sharing with you guys that you can actually just install in your browser, and then now go on your site, and then you're gonna see now if a user has a Chrome extension is Facebook still receiving the data so it's actually a pretty fun exercise I had a lot of fun making this Chrome extension and it, it's a really good test to see is Facebook actually receiving the data because it's really important that you send as much data as possible to Facebook because that's actually what they use in order to train their models and their AI to optimize who they're showing their ads to so it's so that's why that that connection between your website and Facebook needs to ideally always be there I, I know it's not always always possible Possible. But with this Chrome extension, I'm gonna test my site, but then you're gonna be able to use it for free. Um, you don't even need to give an email or anything. You can just download it and you're gonna be able to also test your site just to see if your site is bulletproof, right? So with that being said, let's get into this week's content. All right, so I am now on my website. In order to uh, make this test, you're gonna need a few things. So the first thing you're gonna need is the Facebook Pixel Helper. So that's a Chrome extension that you can download. And most likely, if you've been playing with you know, your own tracking um, and your pixel, you probably already have it installed, but in case you don't, I'll leave that link in the description of this video. Guys, by the way, this is totally free to install if you're not familiar with the tool, but here it's showing that I actually have two pixels set up on my website. And the, you can see here, it's like lighting up, it's showing the number two, um, and also the, like the, I guess the background of this Chrome extension is blue. That usually means that the pixel, like Facebook was able to receive my data. Whenever it like, it just like stays gray, then that usually means that the pixel wasn't able to load on the website. And you'll see when we add my Chrome extension, it's gonna be gray. Um, and then I'll also explain how we could potentially fix that. But uh, that's gonna be, uh, you know, the punchline of this video. But um, this year is showing that everything is working correctly. And then excuse the amount of Chrome extensions I have here, but the only important ones right now are this one. And I'm also gonna show you this one. So this is the Google Tag Assistant. Um, and uh, this basically just tells you if you have something like Google Tag Manager installed on a website, maybe you have Google Analytics 4. So this is what this Chrome extension does. Again, right here, it's showing that everything is working correctly. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of things installed on my website just because A, I mean, I, we're a marketing agency, but also is because uh, we have the YouTube channel. So we do a lot of videos on how to set, you know, all that cool tracking stuff. So that's why I have a lot of demo accounts. But uh, as you can see, things are all loading properly. They're actually all loading and um, that's all perfect. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install my Chrome extension and uh, I'm gonna show you what happens when that gets installed. So I've actually made the Chrome extension. So it's a pretty simple Chrome extension, but it works really well. And uh, you can actually get the link, but it's gonna be in the description of this video. And then you're gonna see it. It's gonna be in a folder like this, all right? Uh, it has everything already there in the folder. Those are just like the images of the Chrome extension. It's just like a requirement in order for you to upload a Chrome extension. And then, I mean, if you're in Google Drive folder, you're just gonna go here and click download. And then that's gonna download it to your computer, okay? So once you download into your computer, you can just hit the, like, I guess the three dots at the top, and then you're gonna wanna go to extensions and then you're gonna click on manage extension. I didn't really take the time to publish this Chrome extension just because, I mean, there's like a two to three week delay just because you need to review the Chrome extension. And I mean, it's a whole process. So I just didn't feel like going through all of that just for this demo. So uh, that's why you're gonna have to upload it manually. Now, if you don't see something like this, that's probably because this is like toggled uh, off. So you wanna come to the right here and toggle this on. And now you see this here, load unpacked. So you're gonna click on that. And this is where you're gonna select the uh, Facebook pixel uh, blocker that I just made you download. Make sure that you're just uploading the folder because sometimes if you download, it might download as a zip file. So make sure, yeah, you're just uploading like the, the root folder. Uh, but then when you upload it, you're gonna see something like this here. Now, if I go back to my website and if I reload the page, you're gonna see, right? Remember what I told you um, earlier? When it's gray like this, that means that the Facebook pixel wasn't able to load, right? So nothing here loaded. And if I click here, here you can see that it, it detected something, but we've got six errors here. We can see that it was actually blocked um, and it wasn't able to load. So that's because my Chrome extension is working and it's actually blocking both the Pixel and Google Tag Manager. The reason I really wanna share this with you is because a lot of companies, what they'll do is they'll just install the Facebook Pixel on the website. 
They might use Google Tag Manager to do it, or they might actually just manually install on the website. And if that's the only thing you're doing, in this example for my website, Facebook is not receiving anything because I it's being blocked right now. And what I've made here is a pretty simple ad blocker, like real ad blocker companies, they have like a full on team that's just dedicated to their solution, right? So it's gonna be a lot better than what I have here. And what I'm trying to say is, if my ad blocker was able to basically disarm your Facebook Pixel and Google Tag Manager, imagine what a real one would do. Please remember or note that this one here, my Chrome extension, only will block the Facebook Pixel and Google Tag Manager from loading on, on your website. It doesn't do TikTok or Pinterest, but like a real one would do. It's just, again, I've literally made this just for a demo. And I think I even went a bit overboard just for a demo. But now that you understand the problem and what that could potentially do to your tracking, let me explain how this is happening. And then after that, we'll talk about a solution. So how is this happening? So when you install the Facebook Pixel on your website, so this could be like manually, this could be using an app or a plugin or potentially inside Google Tag Manager. So what it does, it just looks at all the scripts that are being loaded on the page and says, oh wait, actually I found this script that is trying to send data to Facebook. Well, let's just go ahead and block that script. So it loads all the other scripts, but just blocks this one. So that's how we can only block the Facebook Pixel script or the Google Tag Manager script without affecting all the other scripts. It doesn't touch all the other scripts. So that's why like everything else on the website works properly. It's just not that Facebook Pixel script. And that's usually what an ad blocker will do, but like times 10. And um, that's, that's what's causing the issue, right? And if you look at Google Tag Manager, if I open this up, if you have Google Tag Manager installed on your website, then this is probably what you had to do. So you had to install this script in the head section and install the script in the body section. And if you look here, it's actually loading it with the Google Tag Manager domain. So same thing, my Chrome extension looks at this and says, hey, I know Google Tag Manager. I know why people use that. So I recognize this script. Let me go ahead and block that script. So now it won't be able to load on the page. And that's why if I just show you, if I hit preview, and I try to connect to my website. Perfect, so it's trying to connect. Now if I go here, it's saying that it was not found and it couldn't connect. So that's a big issue. And for all you guys that are saying, hey, that's fine because I'm using the Facebook conversion API. Well, if you're sending data using the Facebook conversion API and Google Tag Manager is not able to load on your website, nothing's being sent to Facebook because you're relying on the web container most likely to send data to the Facebook conversion API, right? If you've watched my other videos showing you how to set it up, I usually use the GA4 tag and this is actually not being loaded right now because nothing is working. So if your web container is not working, your Facebook conversion API is not working. And I mean, nothing is working. So it's kind of like a useless Facebook conversion API set up if you have one and GTM is not able to load on the website. And I think I've made that clear also earlier in this video, ad blockers will block Google Tag Manager because not a lot of people or companies use Google Tag Manager for other reasons and tracking. Sure, there's a bunch of other use cases and I like to use a tool for other things personally, but most people, they use Google Tag Manager to, you know, to send data to Google Mix 4, Facebook, TikTok, and all that fun stuff, right? So this is why ad blockers will block it. And now data, Facebook is not receiving anything. And, and potentially like at this point also G4, or if ever you have like a TikTok as well set up through this, then not, you know, no, none of your platforms are receiving data. Okay, so now you understand the problem. You kind of understand how this is happening. Let's talk about the solution here. So the solution is somewhat simple. And uh, basically this is what it is. So when I'm opening this code here, we just need to change this. And this is called proxying Google Tag Manager. So instead of loading the Google Tag Manager uh, library on your own domain, what we actually do is we load it on a subdomain. So the subdomain, I also recommend that it's first party, uh, but my Chrome extension, the way it works is if, even if it's like third party, it's still gonna work properly. Ideally, what you do is you load it on your own subdomain because it stays in a first party context. So a good example would be, I don't know, uh, server.vertexmarketingagency.com instead of Google Tag Manager. And now when I, you know, the user goes on my website, a Chrome extension doesn't know what server.vertexmarketingagency.com, like it could be anything, right? It, it could potentially be your own server that you have inside your company to be able to, I don't know, do analysis on your customers to potentially prevent fraud. Like it, there's so many different things. It could be like your shipping company, right? So an ad blocker can't go ahead and block that because they could potentially block an essential part of your website. If they don't know what it is, they, they're not gonna block it because then their users would get mad if now the website 
website doesn't function properly, right? But if the ad locker recognizes the Google, they know, you know, again, they know what Google Tag Manager is. They know what the Facebook pixel is. So they, that's why they're 100% sure that they can block that script from loading. So again, the solution is to proxy in GTM. I'm not gonna show you how to do that in this video because I've made another video showing you how to do that. This was more of just like an example and for me to show you actually what happens when an ad locker is installed and why your conversion API setup might not be as good as you think it is. But the solution to that is to also proxy in Google Tag Manager. And um, I'm actually gonna go on my website right now if I go back in the admin. Okay, so I am now in the uh, back end of my website and let me actually just show you what happens when I proxy the Google Tag Manager script. So this script is now proxied, so I'm gonna paste that here. And now this is proxied as well. I'm gonna save this. Perfect, so now I just updated my Google Tag Manager script and um, I'm actually using a state server to do that. And as you can see here, it's not loading with, oh, it's, not, it's not loading with the Google Tag Manager domain, it's actually loading with a different subdomain. Again, ideally it's first party, so it, it would be my subdomain here, but now that script, when it's looking to potentially block Google Tag Manager, it's not gonna find it inside that script, right? So that's been saved now. If I close this and preview again, so I'm gonna preview my website. So perfect, so I'm previewing my website right now and you're gonna see that this still gets blocked, right? Because when someone using a Chrome extension to like block your pixel, it's always gonna block the pixel because this blocks browser tracking. But now it's actually not blocking my Google Tag Manager container. So all my tags related to the pixel and if actually I show you right here, they should fail. So you can see it right now, it just failed. And that's because it's still blocking the script. But what it's not blocking is this one right here. And the reason it's not blocking this one right here is because it's actually sending it to my own custom subdomain. So if you've watched my other video showing you how to set up the Facebook conversion API, I talk about how what you wanna do is you wanna send the data to your own server. So you're gonna create a, your own custom subdomain, the same one that I would use to proxy GTM. And now the data gets, gets sent to your server. And once it's in your server container, then you can send it to Facebook using the Facebook conversion API. So like I said, I have a whole video showing you how to do this part. This video was more just to show you what really happens when a user is using like an ad blocker Chrome extension and how, you know, like your, your maybe your setup isn't as good as you think it is. But guys, uh, that's pretty much it for this video. So I wanted to show you how uh, an ad blocker will actually block your pixel and Google Tag Manager from loading on your website. But if you proxy Google Tag Manager, then the ad blocker, I mean, hey, some ad blockers might still find a way around and who knows, maybe in a few months, it, we're gonna need to do a different approach because the ad blocker community would have a new way to block Google Tag Manager. It's a bit of like a cat and mouse game, but for now, this works really well, and I've tested that with also other ad blockers. And uh, let me know in the comment section if it also works for you. And also, if you want to keep the Chrome extension, you're more welcome to just keep it in your browser, and it's just going to block all Facebook Pixel and Google Tag Manager for other companies. But if ever you don't want that, I recommend uh, just like, removing it from your Chrome because it might also interfere with your when you're trying to test uh, your your setup, right? So maybe you want to remove it because there's no on or off button. As soon as you install it to your Chrome, it's activated, right? But to remove it, you can kind of click on the the puzzle right here and uh and then it's actually right here so right so you can hit three dots and click on remove from chrome extension but guys that is it for this video hopefully you've learned something new and you've learned a new trick to improve your tracking setup but that is it bye for now